Hey guys, this is David from Omega Engineering. We get a lot of questions on how to set up weight measurement systems. So stick around, because today we're going to be setting up a multiple load cell system with a junction box, two load cells, and a meter. So most common weight measurement systems have multiple load cells beneath each leg of the tank that you're going to be mounting it under. For the purpose of this demonstration, we have two Omega LC62SP load cells that are rated for 10 kilograms, hooked up to this very exotic high-tech device, also called the 2x4. The signal from the LC62SP is going to a JBox4-ET, which is a Omega summing box that sums or consolidates the net signal from every single load cell and feeds it to a meter. And we have the DP400S, which not only is our readout, but it also provides excitation to drive these two load cells. The obvious disclaimer here, we do not recommend mounting these load cells um, or anchoring them on any kind of base or platform which is not rigid like these two by fours. This is a very primitive and base experiment that we put together overnight. Now that being said, we also carry tank weighing assemblies, the TWA series. You can go and check them out by clicking on the link below in the description. They're self-adjusting and pretty easy to install and they beat the heck out of a two by four. So there you have it, folks. Let's dive straight in and uh, let's start with the wiring and let's set it all up. So here we have two um, Omega LC62SP single point load cells. So we have four wires that are coming out. Red being your positive excitation, your black is the negative excitation lead, green is your positive signal lead, and white is your negative signal lead. And you have a shield or your drain wire, which you would be connecting to the shield on the terminal block. So if you look at the terminal block over here, uh, from the top you'll have positive signal, negative signal, shield, negative excitation, and positive excitation. So just correspond what the leads stand for from the load cell so green would go to positive signal white goes to negative signal and then shield is your clear wire and then black is your negative excitation and red is your positive excitation do the same thing for the other load cell as well and uh, connect the other load cell to a different terminal block so now that you're done with connecting the load cell to the jbox4 terminal blocks uh, if you look at the bottom of the jbox4 over here you should have another terminal block now that is a terminal block that actually connects to your meter or your readout or any kind of DAC system. And you'll kind of see the same thing. From left to right, you'll see positive signal, negative signal, shield, negative and positive sense, which you wouldn't be using. And you'll see negative excitation and positive excitation. From the meter, you can use any meter um, that takes in a four wire ratio metric signal. Feed your wires through, red for positive excitation, black for negative excitation, and uh, green and white for positive and negative signal. Take the wires and connect them to the back of the DP400S. Follow the schematic on the back of the DP400S. Make sure that you correspond with the terminal block from the J box, and you're good to go. So now that we're done with the wiring of the junction box with the load cells, I'm going to show you the setup and adjustment of these interchangeable load cells. Interchangeability typically means that one load cell reading is within the rated specification of another identical load cell of the same kind and same range. So now for the adjustment, we have a known dead weight of 0.378 kilograms. So we're going to apply this dead weight on each load cell, measure the signal from each load cell, and adjust the signal to match the least signal when compared to all the load cells. So right now, I'm going to apply the load on the first load cell, allow it to stabilize for a little bit, and I'm going to use a multimeter, set it to read millivolts DC. I have connected my leads from the multimeter to the signal wires coming from the load cell, the green and the white wires namely. I see 0.38 millivolts. Now take the weight and apply the same dead weight on the second load cell and do the same thing. Connect your multimeter across the signal leads from the load cell and I read 0.37 millivolts. So now what I'm going to do is use the potentiometer inside the junction box that corresponds to the first terminal block that is connected to the first load cell, adjust it. I'm going to go counterclockwise and clockwise, adjust it to match the least value that we got. And in this case, it's going to be 0.37. And there you have it, you have 0.37. So now go ahead and connect the signal wires back to the terminal block. And after that, all we have left to do is uh, punch in the sensitivity value on the DP400S and punch in the max rated capacity of the load cell and we should be good to go. So now let's press some buttons and set up this meter to read the load that we are expecting to read. So first things first, get into the configuration, press the menu button a few times, select configuration, password is going to be 1234, use the up and down arrows to change the password. So now I am into the, I'm inside the configuration menu, you'll see a bunch of options in there. So first option is going to be analog input, select the analog input, sensor type, strain gauge of course. Select strain gauge, scroll down, you'll see millivolt per volt sensor. Select millivolts per volt, 
Now usually it's the millivolts that you get when you apply rated load over the excitation voltage that you're supplying. Common excitation voltages would be 10 volts DC. So in this case, since we got 0.37 divided divide that by 10, you get 0.037. I'm going to be punching that in. So it's 0.037 millivolts per volt. Use the up and down arrow to change the value of the digits and the menu button to scroll through the digits. Hit select once you have the values stored in there. Scroll down, you'll see decimal point. Since I want to read with as much resolution as possible, select 0.000. Select measurement units. Scroll through the list of options, select the units of measurement you want. I want to read in kilograms, so I have kg selected. Hit select and then scroll down, you'll see full scale. Now full scale is the value that you want to see when you have the load applied on all four loads at the same time. Now in this case, we have set up this unit to read 0.378. So I'm going to punch in 0.378 kg and hit select to save that. And boom, that's it. We're good to go and hit the menu button which is the last button from the top a few times you'll go back to run mode now you might see a value that is not the actual reading that you expect to see there might be a zero offset so to tear that out hit the menu button once or twice you should see the tear button pop up press and hold the tear button that should zero out the reading and you should start reading from 0, 0.000 kg again like so Now let's go ahead and apply the weight. First load cell, there you have it, 0.378. Apply the weight on the second load cell, there you go, 0.378. Apply the load on both cells. The summing box sums the weight that is applied on both cells, and bam, right on the money, 0.378 kilograms. So that's it for now, folks. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to call us or send us an email, and we'll be more than happy to help you.